it's a pleasure to present uh, Vincent Piloni. He's going to give to the first talk today of the mini course about Hagen Coleman theory. And he's going to sp sp speak about eigen varieties. Okay. The title say that. <laughs> okay. So thanks a lot. Okay, so, so I, I will finish like this series of lectures. So let, let me, uh, oh, okay. So first let, let me say that uh, after the talk, I, I put some notes for, I mean, some lecture notes for the talks on my webpage, so you can look. Okay, so let me, uh, okay, so let me recall the objects we have. So the, the objects that we have. Uh, so for kappa in uh, x star of t plus m, so some uh, m dominant weight, uh, George has explained how to define, and sorry, and for maybe W in this set of constant representative, George has explained how to define these local cohomologies. Okay, so the first is a KP, so this is the time level, and the second is a kappa, they look similar, but they are not, plus FS. Okay, uh, well, there's also the cuspidal guy. Okay, so these are bounded complex, uh, but this one, he proved the vanishing theorem. So this one is actually concentrated in the interval uh, zero to the length of W, okay? Uh, what do we have also? We have some slope bounds, okay, for these cohomologies, okay? so. For, for the moment, the bounds we have are not like the, the optimal bounds, but somehow, I mean, explain like the, the difference between the two kinds of bounds we can have. And what do we have? We also have this spectral sequence uh, that maybe I, I, I'd like to call in this talk the Brouhaha spectral sequence because it comes from the Brouhaha stratification and which goes from these local cohomologies uh, cohomologies and converges to classical cohomology. Okay, and so what what what's like somehow these local cohomologies they're indexed by by these elements M W. Okay. Somehow, so you have a spectral sequence that starts, I mean, that somehow has on the E1 page, this kind of cohomologies and somehow on the abutment, you have the classical cohomology. Okay, all right. So actually there's, there's a little thing I, I need to kind of add and it is a duality. So I, 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 I need to complete this picture before I move to the eigen variety by speak a little bit about duality. Okay, so, uh, so, so there's, I mean, so first may, maybe recall the classical Serre duality. So the classical Serre duality is a map between uh, the cohomology, classical cohomology in weight kappa, uh, tensored with the cohomology uh, classical cohomology in weight, I mean, the Serre dual of kappa, so somehow this is going to be minus W zero M kappa minus two rho N C. And then I have to put the cuspidal cohomology. And there's a map which is going to QP placed in degree the dimension. Okay, so, so that's the statement of Serre duality. I mean, the statement said we have such a pairing and it induces a perfect pairing on cohomology. Okay, so why, why do we want to consider Serre duality on our local cohomologies? Well, first, I mean, of course, that, that could be like an extra structure. And it's, I mean, it's, it's a natural structure and it's interesting to have it. But there's an, another reason. And the other reason is that you see, we, we have proved this cohomological vanishing for the cuspidal local cohomology. So, so, so this is this, this, this vanishing that I stated here. And I mean, it's reasonable to believe that in some sense there, there should be, I mean, we conjecture that there's a similar vanishing for the non-cuspidal cohomology in the sense that, so 
in the sense that th this is a conjecture that somehow this so this is a conjecture that this guy should be uh, oops what is that should be in this range okay uh, and that's but that's a conjecture and but 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 it's conceivable to believe that one way to attack this conjecture is by duality okay so somehow if there is a perfect duality between the cuspidal cohomologies and like the non I mean and the non cuspidal cohomology then maybe we can attack this conjecture that way okay so so okay so let me explain this now like this duality so actually uh, yeah so duality is a bit complicated, but let's let let me explain this. So for all W in MW, uh, there is some minus version of all the cohomologies we've considered so far. So I put a minus there, and there a minus there. Uh, and there are, there are pairings between the plus series and the minus series. Uh, uh, sorry, it should not be kappa, it should be the third dual. Uh, Uh, cusp. So minus plus fs. Okay, so you see the the duality exchanges the plus and the minus here. Okay, and so somehow we, we, we could have developed, I mean, from the scratch, the theory using the plus theory. So let, let me just, I mean, I'm going to, to, to tell you a, a couple more things. So you see on, on the plus guy, you have an action of H plus, okay, so which was this subalgebra of the uh, of the Iwari algebra, and which is generated by uh, by the the, the dominant, uh, I mean, by the characteristic functions. So let, let me write H P plus minus what what it is, and this is somehow the subalgebra which is commutative and which is generated by by the dominant. Uh, by, sorry, yeah, by, by the by the positive elements. So I don't know. I, I don't know how to call them. I mean, and then you you have the minus algebra, which is generated by the uh, minus guys, and somehow these two algebras are exchanged by by the inverse map. Okay, and so yeah, we have an action of H minus plus. Sorry, should be minus. Uh, sorry. Okay, so and. Right, and and this pairing is, is compatible with the with the adjunction. With, so sorry, I mean this this pairing somehow. If you, if you take an element kp t kp which is acting uh, on this module, then somehow its adjoint operator is the one where uh, where you act by kp t minus kp, okay, t minus one kp. So somehow I should say that somehow the adjoint kp t minus sorry. Minus kp goes under. I mean, there is the adjoint is kp t minus one kp. Okay, right. So I mean, it's, it's yeah. So 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 it, so it would not make sense to to have a single algebra acting like because somehow the the the, the adjoint for the ser pair pairing is 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 via the inverse function and and this inverse map does not stabilize the subalgebra hp plus okay so it stands hp plus to hp minus all right okay so i mean briefly how how, how is this defined so maybe let me just give you a sketch so how, how are these minus series defined so you you just kind of reverse the 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 locus i mean you kind of reverse the support conditions so let me just just write something that, and I, I hope this is enlightening. So, somehow, what what George said yesterday is that you should consider these kinds of cohomologies. 
uh, uh, something like this. Okay. So, so that was like the, the kind of plus cohomologies, right? So you had, you have like, you take the cohomologies with support of some open and somehow the support is kind of partially closed in the ambient space. And, and there are some directions where it is closed. And these, these are, and this corresponds to the second entries. And now when you define the minus theory, then it's not very surprising, but you somehow kind of inverse the direction where you're, like the support is partially closed. And so it's, it looks like something like this. I mean, I'm, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing a little bit with the indexes, but it's, I mean, there's nothing detailed just to make the pairing work at the end. Right, and yeah, I have new uh, minus W zero M kappa minus two rho and C minus D. Okay, then I can put a minus fs. Sorry, it's a bit ugly. And then you can pair all this. And when you pair, you can you you can somehow take the intersection of the supports. And so you get into some cohomologies, which is now entirely closed. Uh, uh, which is entirely closed in the ambient space. Uh, Okay. Uh, sorry. That 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 should be the canonical shift now. Okay. I can go to to the canonical shift. Uh, sorry. Um, yes. Can the can these closed conditions be be interpreted as uh, growth growth conditions or convergence or what's a, sorry these can these uh, s can these closed conditions be interpreted as convergence or, or growth or moderate growth or? Yeah. I mean, this is. Yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, su support condition. No, I don't know. I mean, it's a support condition. I mean, these are power series, right? Or are they? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, like this is, I mean, somehow, yeah, I mean, these are cohomologies with support. And then I'm, like when, when we make the cup product, we end up with a support. So, I mean, mm -hmm. like the, the, the main difference is that we started with cohomologies in some sense with partially closed support, but which are kind of opposite to each other. And then when we make the cup product, we get some cohomology with entirely closed support. And when well, you have just, cohomology with entirely closed support it, with value in the canonical shift, then you get some trace map mm -hmm. to well, I'm just saying that this that it's topological, but it's also analytic. That's all. I... What? Sorry. It's... No, I, I don't understand. But we the, can. The, the, the calc these 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 complexes are, are are calculated by by analytic functions of some sort. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. No, that's that's so. Okay. All right. So that's okay. So 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 that's the existence of the pairing. I, I should say that we. We, we conjecture that this pairing is non-degenerate, but, but we cannot prove it in general, okay? So, so the conjecture is that the pairing is non-degenerate, but somehow it exists. And it's kind of functorial, and it's compatible with the Serre pairing in, on classical cohomology in some obvious sense. All right, so now what's... Okay, I, I, I mean, if, if you're completely confused by this minus theory, I'm, I'm going to add to the confusion. So one can also add, one can also prove actually, one can also prove that conjugating, conjugation by the longest element uh, realizes an isomorphism between the plus theory uh, with over W and the minus theory over W zero M W W naught okay S F S so so stop but but there you, you have to change the support of the commodity. Okay. I mean it's, it's something we explained with George in, in the GL in, in our paper on GL2, 
and, and somehow this conjugation is, is I mean, for, for GL2 over Q, this conjugation is the Atkin Lehner conjugation. For a general group, wouldn't you have to use a different Iwahori as well? Because you're yeah, exactly. That's 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 the problem. Conjugation again, AGL two for GL two. So somehow the the problem for more general groups is that KP is so the small so the so the problem is that in general there is no involution. There is no involution induced by some representative of W naught okay, on KP. Therefore, when you do this conjugation, you end up with a different KP. But now it's, it's something general that somehow all the finite slope theories for all groups which admit a new RE decomposition are kind of isomorphic. But, but you have to work this out, OK? And, and this takes some time, and we actually did not do it. But OK. Yeah, but but it's true. So 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 it's a bit confusing. Right. So somehow for GL two, you have you're lucky that that the that the atkin lehner involution stabilizes. I mean, there there's an involution on KP, but in but general, but there's no involution. But Vincent, if you take a parahoric subgroup instead of the Ivahori, then you have an involution, right? Yeah, there 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 is. So you're right, but 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 it's not. I mean, but it's not natural from our perspective to work with this parahoric. Okay. Okay. So so we yeah. But you're right. But I mean, for, from our perspective, it's natural to work with a new world. OK, uh, all right. So now, I mean, what we, we can use this for the spectral sequence. So application to the spectral sequence. So the Brouhaha spectral sequence. OK, so let, let me tell you a little bit how it looks like. OK, so I mean. So this is the spectral sequence from local cohomology to classical cohomology. Okay, and that uh, okay. So so let me like draw the terms, and maybe I, I'm not go, 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 going to draw everything, but just just like somehow. Okay, so. Uh, Yeah, so okay, that's there. So 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 that's somehow the, the line Q is equal to zero. And this line is what I call, I mean, this is what I call like the cousin complex, this line of the spectral sequence. But now it's you have other terms in principle. I mean, you do have other terms. H1, E, etc. Then yeah, you have some H0, W. Yeah, you have the sum of the H1, the value, uh, etc. So somehow the, the shape of the spectral sequence is something, maybe I can use color, something like this. It's, it looks like a parallelogram, okay? Because anyway, I know that all the local cohomologies are concentrated in the interval zero D by, by some general vanishing. Okay, so it's it's kind of this in this parallelogram. That's that's the spectral sequence. Mm -hmm. Now I know somehow the, the, the vanishing theorem that George proved is telling us that this part of the spectral sequence, so the, the part for Q strictly positive, so the E1 P Q where Q is strictly positive, is R0 in the cuspidal case. Okay. And what we can show is using duality, we can show that actually the E infinity PQ, where Q is strictly negative, these are also zero in the non cuspidal case. And what happens is somehow, if you, if you had some class, uh, if, if you have some non zero contribution from this EPQ infinity for Q strictly less than zero, using the pairing, you'd be able to prove that there is some non-zero contribution from some E1P, probably D minus Q, but I didn't check, uh, in the cuspidal case, and that would be a contradiction, right? So somehow, I mean, if, if the pairing were perfect, at 
we, we'd be able to deduce directly that somehow the E1 PQ is zero in the non cuspidal case, but somehow using just knowing that the pairing is inducing the perfect self pairing at, at the end, we, we can only deduce this statement about this infinity page. All right, but this is quite good because now I can consider the interior cohomology. So I put a bar everywhere. Okay, that's, and that's, and this line is like the interior cousin complex. Okay, so this line. And now what, what, what we did use from this is that, uh, is that if we take the interior cohomology, then this is a sub quotient of uh, the cohomology of this interior cousin complex. Okay. And actually in the, when the, if the Shimura variety were compact, we conjecture that this is really a quasi isomorphism. I mean, this maps an isomorphism and, and the cohomology is quasi isomorphic to the cousin complex, but we can't prove it either, except maybe in low dimension, where for stupid reason, it's kind of easy to prove uh, the vanishing of the terms below the line. I mean, so sometimes it's easy. Okay. So now, when you say low dimension, is that like dimension less than 100 or dimension one? No, less than two. Less than two. Okay. Strictly less than two. No, less than equal. Okay. So now, I mean, uh, okay. So now let, let me, uh, yeah, let me state a corollary of this is that for any kappa in X star T plus N, now uh, we have this range. Uh, so we, we have, may, maybe let me introduce this set, C of kappa plus. So, so it's like the set of elements in this Vi group for which you can have small slope cohomology in weight kappa. Okay, so I mean, as, as we've seen, like for when, when you consider the, the local cohomology, most of the time, I mean, you, you won't have small slope vectors and somehow there are some special cohomologies for which you can have small slope vectors. And, and this definition of C of kappa plus is, is recording for which Ws we can have small slope vectors in the local cohomology indexed by W. Okay, so, so this is the meaning of this set. And then we have some range, which we denote L mean of kappa, which is like the infimum of the length of this W in C of kappa plus. And we have the L max of kappa, which is like the max of this length of W, where W is in C of kappa plus. And this is like the range where, where you can have small slope cohomology. And indeed, what, what, we, what we now prove is that somehow if you take this interior cousin complex and if you apply the strongly small slope condition, then this is concentrated is in the range uh, L min of kappa, L max of kappa. Okay. And now, of course, what's interesting is that this range, and, and therefore, I mean, and therefore we deduce that the the same statement for the interior cohomology, that this interior cohomology is concentrated in this range. And it's interesting to see that this statement was obtained by a completely different Archimedean method uh, by uh, Blasius, Aris, Ramakrishna, Williams, Schmidt, Mirkovich. I mean, using the computations on the cohomology of, I mean, on PK cohomology, so the cohomology of GK module. Uh, where you replace the small slope condition by some gross condition, which is temperedness. Okay, so so it's yeah, but the, but that's the same range. So it's okay, it's interesting. All right. So now, I mean, I should now say that that we will be able to. We now, I mean, one of my goal is to replace this strictly small slope condition by small slope because actually we can prove this statement with small slope, which is better. And small slope is, is really optimal. Okay, so now I, I think I'm, I'm going to 
explain explain how we can replace strictly small slope by small slope, and this is using the eigen variety. So, so this is one of the application of the eigen variety. Uh, so now, uh, so now, no, no, yeah. So so now, I mean, so now using using the eigen variety. The eigen variety we can show. We can we show uh, that cousin k k plus s is in the range l min of kappa l max of kappa. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I mean, it occurs to me maybe I should I should make some picture also. Before before I, I, I explain the use of the eigen variety, so let let me make one more time the, the GSP four picture. Okay, I, I think the 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 GL two picture is too simple, so let let, let me make the GSP four picture. And so it's it's the picture George made yesterday. So, so we have this. Uh, yeah, let me. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, all right. So so we have this line which is a forbidden line so which is k1 plus 1 is equal to k2 then we have these lines so so this is a picture of weights when is k2 equal to and we have this line which is k1 equal to 1 then we have this diagonal line which is k1 plus k2 equal to 2 okay so in each of this region i can tell you what is c kappa plus so here, C kappa plus is the identity, okay? And we expect to have cohomology in the range zero, small slope cohomology in the range zero. Here, the C kappa plus, so on, on the vertice, C kappa plus has two elements. I think yesterday they were called S2, S2, S1, but anyway, the, you have the length one and the length two element of, of, w, of MW. And you expect to have cohomology in, in the range 0, 1. Here you have S2, S1, and you expect cohomology only. Uh, no, sorry, I'm doing something wrong there. Sorry, I, I went too fast. So I think you have identity. Uh, uh, then yeah, you expect to have cohomology in degree one and two, they're in degree two, they're in degree two and three, and they're in degree three. Okay? And and so what, what it's telling us is that somehow if you look at the small slope part of the cousin complex, maybe there it just boils down to usual overconvergent modular forms, cuspidal, I mean let's say. So H bar zero identity KP uh, kappa. Okay, but now if you're on this uh, on this line, which is somehow singular line, then the complex has length two, and you have a zero bar identity goes to h uh, s two one. Okay. Okay. Uh, and maybe I mean I should say that that's the small slope. Okay, and so on. So, so, so that's like the, the relevant part in some sense, or the small slope part of, of the cousin complex each time. Okay, and and you and you can continue like, like this. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So now let me let me somehow before constructing the eigen variety, explain how how we can use it to get results. Uh, to 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 get the small slope condition, and and also may, maybe to get some other applications. So I can write. So I guess the the main result, in some sense, is is the following theorem that I, I will state in a slightly imprecise way, but uh, then I make it more precise. So for any element in M W, there exists some H W, which is a current sheet. Current sheet over the eigen variety 
which sits over the white space, which is torsion free over the white space. Okay. And so in other words, it has full support over the white space. And such that for any kappa, which corresponds to some classical weight, this cohomology subjects via a specialization map to this local cohomology occurring in the Cousin complex. So really the H bar, which is like the interior cohomology, W, length of W, Kp kappa plus Fs. Okay? So in other words, what it means, it means that all the modules appearing in the Cousin complex, which can be used to compute the interior cohomology, they can be interpolated over the eigenvariety. And really interpolated in the sense that they're torsion free, that the interpolation is torsion free as a module over the white space. So the corollary of this is that any eigenclass Uh, the eigenclass in the interior cohomology in some degree, uh, the classical interior cohomology, uh, is in the support of HW for some W in MW where the length of W is equal to I, okay? Um, okay, so, so that's, that's kind of obvious, right? Because you can, I mean, you know that any eigenclass there, it, it has to, I mean, since this interior cohomology is computed using the Cousin complex or this interior Cousin complex, any eigenclass has to live in, in some module, H bar LW, I mean, some of the modules composing the, the Cousin complex, and then you can lift it to HW. Uh, using the theorem, okay? And I, and I mean, maybe related to uh, Michael's question yesterday, I think it's it's really an interesting question to determine. Question is to determine the element W for which this is true, okay? And there are some guesses, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, and it would be, I mean, and yeah, I mean, there are some guesses that come from Archimedean theory and it's not always clear that the guess is, fulfilled, but it's true under some small slope conditions. But let me not say more about this. Okay. So that's the first corollary. Okay. Uh, so maybe a second corollary, uh, maybe of this is that maybe, yeah, I should, I mean, I'll say it. So we can construct uh, Galois representations. Uh, for interior cohomology classes, cohomology classes, sorry, via analytic interpolation to uh, maybe uh, regular weight cohomology classes. Okay, so let me, I mean, I'm not super, super precise, but let, let me make, okay. So let me, I mean, I, I guess the, oh, okay. So, so, so the real improvement here is really analytic interpretation, which is stronger than just congruences. Okay, and congruences, this was maybe known by work of Boxer, Goldring, Koski, Virtal. So we show we, we did something. I mean, but that's but that's now really analytic interpolation, and this is better for local global compatibility for local global compatibility at least. So let me just go back to my picture and and tell you. I mean, the typical situation, I mean, like, okay, I mean, I, I should say that, okay, so I should I should say that this theorem was already known for, for W, the identity. 
Okay, and that 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 was my my work with Andreata and Jovita. But okay, but but let me therefore give you a, an example where uh, where this was not. I mean, where where I mean, let, let me give you an example of something new. So an example of something new is if you take a class which is in this line. Okay, this line. So the classes which are in this line they occur in degree one and two cohomology. And so classes in this line will have a weight of the form. Uh, okay, I, I wrote it somewhere. So let me just copy it. It's hard to. Uh, so so it will have a weight of the form k1 k2, with k1 plus k2 is equal to three. This is written there. And what we can prove is that there is an associated gear representation, but that was already known. But now we can compute its Hodge state weights, and that was not known before. And what are the Hodge state weights up to twist? There are two minus two k one, one minus k one, one minus k one zero. Okay, and so you see that they have repeated odd state weights. Two, these two odd state weights are the same. And then you, we can also interpolate some period. I mean, using work of Kissing. Okay, but so 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 it gives some more information about this gear representation. Okay, so so that was like the application to. Uh, I mean, this is one possible application. Uh, okay, one other application of the eigen variety I'd like to explain is is this slope improvement. So we can prove small slope condition. Okay, so let me try to sketch the argument, and I, I will sketch it in some uh, rather stupid. Uh, okay, let, let me, uh, sorry, may, maybe I can be slightly more precise than to prove the small slope condition. I, I can prove that the slope, so what, what does this mean? It means that the slope, if you look at this uh, h bar, sorry, h bar w, length of w, kp kappa plus fs, uh, then the slopes are greater than w minus one w zero m kappa plus rho minus rho plus rho I think. Okay, so so that's like the, the the best possible slope. So let me just give you a sketch. I mean, you, it, it's not so hard, and I, I I will give you the sketch for GL two over Q. Okay, which is I mean, in this case we 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 don't need all all this to to, to prove this, but just to give you an example. So so we consider the cousin complex. Uh, okay, which looks something like this. I can put some bar. Uh, H1, KP, K, plus it is. Okay, so yeah, let's say we only know that the UP slopes are greater than zero, but we expect, we expect that they are greater than one. And here we know that the UP slopes are greater than K, and this is actually the best, the best estimate because somehow there's, I mean, because if you look at the formula, if you develop the formula that's giving you the slope bound, you, you will see that the row cancel out in this case. Uh, or maybe I got the formula slightly wrong. Maybe it should be a minus. Uh, yeah, it should be a minus. Yeah. Okay. So now let's, let's, let's assume that, 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 that something absurd is happening. So we have some f, which is of, say, up slope zero in white k. Okay, and we want to prove that this is not possible. But now we can deform this f. And so we can find some deformation, f prime, which has up slope zero, and which has weight k prime, which is now strictly positive. Okay, strictly, big, big slope, big, big weight. But now if the weight is very big, then this form has to be classical because its image in, in this other term of the cousin complex has to be zero because on the other term of the cousin complex, the UP slopes are uh, greater than K. And so if K prime is strictly positive, then we, we win, right? So F prime has to be classical. Okay, but now we know, but now we know that there are 
we know that somehow the UP slope of classical forms is greater than one. And why do we know this? Well, of course, we, we can make a Q expansion computation. But that's kind of a cheat. But there, there's somehow a more robust thing that works all the time, and which is to look at the Betty realization. And so if we look at the Betty realization, so somehow if we look at the Betty cohomology, then actually the Betty cohomology produces lattices which give the best slope bound. And so there's it's something produce a lattice in Betty cohomology which gives the best slope bound. So there's something a bit magical that somehow, yeah, Betty cohomology works much better for slopes, for, for proving slope bounds. Okay. And that's that's somehow how we proceed in general. Okay. All right. So so now I, I, I have to tell you. Uh, I have to so let let me somehow summarize. I mean, I'll go back to, to, to the theorem I, I'd like to explain. And so the, the theorem I'd like to, to, to explain is, is the construction of this Korean sheaf that's torsion free over the weight space and that kind of interpolates all these local cohomologies that show up in the cousin complex, right? So all these particular local cohomologies. So actually we, we can interpolate everything, but in general it's it's complicated to, to prove that that I mean it's probably not true that it's torsion free over the weight space. Okay, but only for these we can prove that it's torsion free over the weight space. So let me try to explain this. Uh, okay. So, okay. So now that's maybe the last part of the talk. This is like the, the part where I will explain how to interpolate interpolation of this R gamma W KP kappa plus FS. Okay. So, I think what I my, my strategy is to state a long theorem and then some and then explain some things in this theorem. So okay. So so that's I, I think the, the main theorem about interpolation. So let's take some p adequate. And I denote it by new, new A. So from the ZP point of the torus to a cross where A is some Tate algebra and your maybe let, let me put it there. So say it's some affinoid subset of the weight space. So now what we claim is that first there exists a cohomology R gamma W an. So, so that's again, sorry, I should say that's again for W in this MW, so in this coastal representatives, KP new R plus or minus FS. So this cohomology, I mean, so in general, it will be some bounded complex of A module. Uh, okay. And, and Maybe they deserve a name, and so the, their name is locally analytic over convergent uh, cohomology. So, so there's like a locally analytic that's extra before we did, did not have this, and it kind of refers to the fact that we're taking the cohomology of some complicated sheaf. And this is why here yeah, I, I add W an, and this an is for analytic. Okay, so we have this cohomology. Uh, so now, I mean, so, so, so these cohomologies, they, they relate to the, to the local cohomologies we've defined so far. So if you take kappa, which is now some classical weight, okay, then, okay, I'm, I'm going to do something. I, so I have kappa, but I, I will introduce a new that's kind of related to kappa, and then I, I will tell you in a second why, and what, what this means and why we do this. It's, it's not just for 
the pleasure of suffering. So from kappa, we get a new by applying some recipe. Okay, and that's, I mean, both are characters. From T of ZP to QP cross. And then we have maps from this W analytic cohomology, kappa, this coefficient, I mean, parameterized by this weight nu r uh, plus fs to the old local cohomology, sorry, it's, sorry, it's the, the, the other direction, from the old cohomology. So, so, so the one we consider. Okay, so, so, so this is the cohomology that was discussed by George. And then this, this is some new interpolated cohomology, sorry, but, but yeah, excuse me, it's not new, I, I'm, I'm specializing in this way. Okay. So, so we have a map like this. And if I, I consider the minus theory, then we have a map in the other direction. But okay, yeah, I don't know. I think we did something wrong with the normalization because now it's, it's not only in the other direction, but it's also going to go into the third weight. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, but that's life. So we we get these specialization maps, and actually these these maps they can they can be further studied. So actually they can be further studied. We can study. Specializations. Well, it's not. Yeah, I mean it's, it's a specialization in the weight using a. BGG spectral sequence using a BGG spectral sequence. Okay, I, I, I'm not going to write exactly the, the BGG spectral sequence. It will be in the notes, but somehow it's a spectral sequence that go from locally analytic over convergent cohomology uh, and converges to uh, over convergent cohomology. Okay, and now the spectral sequence it's indexed. It's indexed by the Weil group of the Levy. Okay, so the, the Brua spectral sequence is indexed by the Costor representatives, and it's a spectral sequence that goes from all the over convergent cohomologies to classical cohomologies. And now we have another spectral sequence that goes from locally analytic over convergent cohomology to over convergent cohomology, and that's indexed by the the the, the wide group of the Levy, okay, and probably we could combine them and somehow get an even bigger spectral sequence that's now indexed by the full wide group. Okay, and actually, I mean, using this BGG spectral sequence, we can also prove that. So may, maybe that's the third point. And uh, can I just check? Maybe this is a. Yeah. Formality, but are you saying the locally analytic things, which depend on an affinoid A, are somehow compatible with derived space change in A when you specialize? Yeah, well, I mean, I think starting from point two, I'm 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 considering the situation where new is uh, is is a point, right? I mean, sorry, where where, where new is a QP valued character. Okay, so you're you're right. Yeah, I think that David is right. So so first, I I, I considered the the general situation where new is valued in any subset of W. Okay, and then we get some locally analytic over convergent cohomology. That's that's the definition of one, but now I can kind of apply the definition of one to uh, to the case where new is just uh, a single character, which is QP, QP valued. And you're right that there's anyway a relation by, I mean, that there's a derived base change relation that allows you to go from a family of characters to a character. Okay, so yes. Is that okay? Yeah. Great, great, thanks. And the, the last thing is that we can, uh, yeah, the, the last thing is that we can use BGG to check That uh, may, maybe let 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 me call this map uh, phi one, phi one, and phi two. That phi 
phi i induce uh, quasi isomorphism on the strongly small string phi. Okay, so, so that's as usual. I mean, that, that, that's not so, so surprising. So that's the third point. Uh, now, uh, maybe the fourth point is that we have we have pairings. On this locally analytic cohomology, okay. I mean, you, these are the pairings you can guess. We have, and I mean, I've, I've written them in the notes. So, so the five, the fifth point is that we can also prove the vanishing theorem. So, namely, we can prove that this big cohomology. If you take the cuspidal guy, so I mean, yeah, I did not mention, but there, there is a cuspidal guy all the time. And if you take the plus fs, then this is actually a complex which is concentrated in degree zero to the length of the body. Okay. And if you take the minus fs, then it's a complex that concentrated in uh, degree zero d to the d minus the length of the body. And uh, okay, yeah, and that's all. So let me just make the quick remark is that we switched from kappa, which is the current weight to nu. And well, the, the, the reason is that somehow kappa is the weight. I mean, this is, this kappa is somehow a current weight. And this nu is more like uh, the weight of a local system. Okay, but but the reason we do this is that over the eigen variety we like to consider we like to consider all w in m w at the same time. Same time, and then new is kind of compatible, the new is better. So, so, so new is really compatible when you try to consider all the local cohomologies at the same time, you should label weights using new. And that's, yeah, that works much better. And it's not surprising because one day there will be some Aishwar Shimura map and, 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 and this will explain this. Okay, all right, so, okay. So now let's, let's review quickly the theorem. So there are several points. So the first point is, is maybe this, this existence of cohomology, of interpolated cohomology, okay? So I'd like to explain this first. Okay. Then there are other points which are rather formal. So I won't say anything. I think everything is rather formal except the fifth point. So the, the, the fifth point is, is really the, the technical hardest part of, of our work. So I think this is really good. And it was already hard in, in our previous work with Andrea and Jovita. And yeah, it's, it's maybe gotten even harder. Um, okay, but on the other end, I mean, if, okay, yeah. I mean, if the Shimura variety were compact, it, it would not be hard, okay. but, but it's hard because the Shimura variety is not compact. Uh, okay. So let, let, let me try to, to explain one. So one, one, one is, is the statement that, that, that you can consider these interpolated cohomologies. And, and so you, you, you have to build interpolated sheets. Okay, and so, and so, so, this, uh, and so I'd, I'd like to explain some point of view on this, which is quite general, I think. So let me. Okay, so uh, okay. So first, I mean, I should say that we could certainly follow what what we did with Andreata and Jovita, and 
and it, it, it works. And, and I think this also has been generalized by lots of people. So I, I put some references in the notes. But, but I'd like to, to explain some uniform point of view, I think, which, somehow, which allows to deal with any Shimura variety. So, okay. So, but, but like, okay, but, but you, you don't have to, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think in the Ziegel case, you, you can still do things explicitly as, as we did with, with uh, Adrian and Fabrizio, but yeah. But, but I think it's, it's also good to have this more general point of view. So, okay. So, so we have this diagram, okay, where this is the, the arch state map and this is the map pi. Okay, so, so this is like the perfect Ichimura variety on the top of the roof, this is the flag variety, and this is the, the finite level Shimura variety. So now we, ha we have torsors. So we have the torsor M H state, uh, which is defined as follows. So you take G and you divide by the unipotent radical of G, and it goes to G divided by P, okay? And so this is an M torsor, okay, because you have uh, the uh, the left transaction action, so, so so this gives a structure of an M torsion, and you also have the G action, and so this is an G equivalent M torsion. Now you also have the torsor M de Ram, which lives on SKPKP. Okay, uh, and so this is the torsor of basis of uh, maybe Lee of A plus omega A transpose, which is compatible with the polarization. Okay, okay. so now there's an easy proposition. I mean, it's really an observation in this case, is that we have the identity between the pullback of the M Doram of the Doram torsor by pi and the pullback of the Hochstedt torsor by uh, pi Hochstedt, okay, as Kp equivalent torsors. Okay, so somehow this M Hochstedt was G equivalent, and so when you pull it back, it's still G equivalent. So if you want, it's Kp equivalent. Uh, okay, I mean, yeah, and then M Doram is, is KP equivalent because it's it's pulled back. Okay, so yeah, I mean that's so. Let, let me just give I mean give the wine line proof. I mean, somehow the the key thing is that if you pull back the the tautological exact sequence over the flag variety. Uh, then this is the edge state exact sequence. I mean, by by sorry by by construction. Mm. Okay, and then from this, it's I mean, this kind of a tautology that the two torsor are valid. Um, okay, so now. Maybe, so let's Gn be the subgroup of G of elements which are congruent to one mod P to the N. And let's Mn be the subgroup of M elements which are congruent to one mod P to the N. And let's Kpn be the, the uh, sorry, be the Huawei. of Mn of Zp. So the claim is this, is that, uh, so the torsor M Doram as a reduction of structure to a M M, N, K, P, M, torsor, 
that we denote m the ram n. But this is not over the full Shimura variety, but only on some small subset, I mean, which are these neighborhoods of, of the W orbits, of, sorry, of the KP orbits of W. So maybe over uh, this, the inverse image by the Hodge state map of W, G, and KP, which sits inside the Shimura variety. And okay. when you wrote Iwahori of MN of ZP, was that just the Iwahori of M of ZP? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Now, I mean, I should say that I will go slightly over time. So, yeah, I don't, I mean, yeah. So, okay, I'm sorry. I mean, is it okay if I continue a little bit or? Uh, for me, it's okay. Maybe the other organizer need to <laughs> agree to. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I think I, I think need five okay. minutes. We have, yeah, we have yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. And people can leave. I mean, I think I've, I've told you most of the things I, I mean, yeah. now it's it's kind of more like into the proofs, but I think I've told you most of this. So don't worry, Vincent. Okay, Go thanks. Ahead. Okay, so okay, so so so, I, so I'd like to, to to give you a a very quick proof of this, that that works for uh, an issue more variety. Uh, okay, but maybe I mean like it's. It's possible to, to, to describe this reduction of the torso in some down to earth term, and it's going to be like the differentials which come from, uh, from the Hodge state map, I mean, which are kind of congruent to the image of the canonical subgroup via, via the Hodge state map. That's, that's like the down to earth description, but, 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 but let's, let's see how this goes. So, so the, the idea is that we first construct everything on the flag variety. So, of, over the flag variety, sorry, I should not start here. And it's, and it's going to be very similar to, to somehow this very, this example in the toy model. So we start over the flag variety, so, we, okay. And we have this orbit, omega g n k p, over so p divided by p, but we start by rewriting this this kind of piece of the Brouwer cell in a slightly improved way. So we kind of improve the uniformization in some sense of this Brouwer cell. And so here's the, the improved uniformization. We can also write it as I mean it's it's, it's completely elementary. Yeah? It's, we we can rewrite it as w. G n k p w minus one w divided by p intersected with w g n k p w minus one. Okay, but somehow the, the interest is that now I mean before we were doing the quotient with the big group p and now we are doing the quotient with a much smaller group, which is p intersect w g n k p w minus one. And so now I can tell you I can build some torso over there. And I just use the same space. But now I divide by UP intersected with W, G, N, K, P, W minus one. Okay. All right. And this sits there. And I call this M Hodge state N. And now if you look, this, this has, well, first, this has a right action of KP, okay? KP acts on the right. And this has also an action of the quotient of P intersected WGN KP W minus one by UP intersected WGN KP W minus one. And I let you compute that this is MN KPM. So in, I mean, in general, it, it can be a bit more complicated, but for a split group, it's, it's, it's simple. Okay, all right. So this is MH, MH state N. So now we consider the pullback 
of M or state N via P or state. And this is some open inside the pullback of M odd state via P odd state, which identifies with the pullback of M dorap. Okay. And moreover, all these all this is KP equivalent. Okay. So yeah, we we might say okay, that's that's great, and we can descend freely. But we have to be a little bit careful because proetal descent is not effective. Nevertheless, we can pass to the topological spaces. So let's pass to the topological spaces. Okay, and now we have some open there. Okay, this is at the level of topological spaces. But now we can make the question by KP. Okay, and this is fine because actually we can prove that this map is the question by KP. So this is a question by KP. Okay, and so the same is true there. And therefore, if we make the question by KP, we actually get divided by KP, which is M Doram. So this is the topological space of M Doram. And here we have something. So the question by KP. Uh, and this thing we call uh, we call the topological space of M Doram N. Okay. But now this is open. And the good thing is that I mean this this M Doram is, is an addict space, and we have some open of the I mean we have some open as a topological space, but therefore it, it has a structure of an addict space. So we get that M Doram N inside M Doram is an addict space. Okay. I mean, we, we don't really have to define the addict structure. We just have to define the topological space, and that's fine. Okay. And now it's easy to check. Easy to check that it's a torso. Okay. Because again, checking that it's a torso, you can again, I mean, you, you can somehow check on topological space that 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 it's a torso under the group uh, M N K P M. Okay, so 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 I think that's that's fine. So 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 that's the proof. So let me briefly just remark that here we have not used. We have not used seriously. Seriously, that escape tor is a perfect weight space. Okay. And so let, somehow what, what we have used really is, is this stop diagram. So sorry, I, I will come back to the diagram. Yeah. We, we, we have used that, that somehow we, we, had, we, we had a diagram like this. So this, this, this we use this diagram, but, but it's, it's okay to, to have the diagram at at the level of topological spaces in a certain sense. I mean, it's clearly okay. And we have used this identity there in some crucial. So now we, so that, I mean, the only thing I want to say is that uh, the work of uh, Diao, Liu, Lan, and Zhu, they, they've provided all we need. And, and so if, if you're ready to use the language of diamonds, you, you, you can run this argument. So now, so what I just want to say is that there is some work of uh, Yao, uh, Liu, Lan, and Zhu, and uh, I mean, and somehow what what they proved is enough to have to to make the general argument, general case. So so this is enough for, for the general case. I should I should also say that somehow Kayani and Scholz they they proved these results that we need. Uh, for Hodge type Shimura variety, modulo some boundary issue. And I think for the boundary, there was also an argument of Aris, of N1 Aris. That's, that's, that, that was like in the Hodge case. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. So, so that's, so, so that gives you a reduction of the torso. And now the, the, the good thing now is that, uh, 
is that this group, MN, KPM, has many representations. And it has a new ID composition. Okay. So this means that, uh, yeah, we can, so we can, we can construct some representations like maybe V kappa A N analytic by just looking at functions from M N K P M to the affine line, so some analytic functions such that F of M B is equal to minus W zero M kappa F of M, sorry, kappa A, okay. And that, that kind of makes sense for any, that, I mean, this is somehow this is good for any, for any character like this, which is an analytic. Okay. And therefore we can build some big sheaves like so. We can build some sheaf, maybe new, new and analytic. Uh, yeah, so what, what we can take as a definition is uh, we can take like the functions on this uh, on this torsor M Doran N that we can tensor, completely tensor product over QP with this V kappa N N, and then we can take like the invariance under the action of M N kappa N. Okay, and so that kind of defines that, that defines the interpolated sheaves. Okay, so I think I've I've told you how to define the coefficient sheaves. Uh, now, now you let me yeah let me stop writing and just go back to the to, to the theorem I wrote there. So that, that, that was the theorem about the eigenvariety. Yeah, so, so that's this, this theorem. Okay, so, so if, if, we, if we go back to, to this theorem, then, uh, okay, then, then we see that somehow for, for the first point, it's, it's okay because we, uh, okay, so it's, it's okay. Okay, I mean, the sense that we, I, I've told you how to define the coefficients and now you, you run the very same procedure as George explained, so, so that's okay. Uh, I think for the second point, I mean, so these are the specialization maps to classical cohomology. I mean, sorry, to, to cohomologies with value in classical sheaves. I mean, that's also okay from the construction, so, so that's fine. Uh, I think the BGG spectral sequence is not really a surprise. I mean, I mean, if you have some experience in the subject, I think you, you can believe me, so it's okay. Uh, and I think that the third point is also okay. I mean, if you have the same experience in BGG, the pairings, you, you just do the same definition as I did at the very beginning. Uh, of the talk for the classical sheaves. I mean, and some of the, the same definition is going to work, so, so that's okay. Well, this part is, well, you, you have to believe, I mean, George explained the situation for the, for the classical sheaves. And well, there you really need some extra work to, to, to deal with the general sheaves, but I don't really have time to explain this. And well, I, I've not really had time to tell you how you construct the sheaves HW for of this other theorem. So let, let, let me just go back again. Uh, we have this. Uh, Vincent, I have to leave. I just wanted to, I've been holding on to sure, a question yeah. for 20 minutes. Uh, is anybody going to look at the subgroups of, uh, of uh, Iwahori subgroup and look at Iwahori and uh, with with the uh, Tipus characters? Yeah, we, we, we did it actually. You did it? Yeah, sure. But oh, I did okay. not want to. All right, all right then. To, to make the presentation even worse than it is, so I, I ignore right. it. Okay, then I'll okay. look for that. Okay. 
Yeah, no, it's it's, it's, in it's the not paper. in the notes, but it's in your. No, it's not paper. in the notes, but it's in the paper. Yeah. Right, okay. Okay, and let, and let me just say like some of the. Okay, I, I've not really told you how how to prove this. Like the, the existence of these shields, but somehow this relies completely on on the vanishing of the big cohomologies. Okay, and, and when, when you have the vanishing of the big cohomologies, it's not it's not so hard to to prove this. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. I stop here. Well, let's thanks Vincent for the next. Yeah. Call. Thank you. Um, do you have any question, any observation? I have some questions, but uh, I have some questions, but I will uh, I will maybe send a message to Vincent as. Uh, uh, Maybe people would like to relax a bit before the next talk. So, uh, Vincent oui. and uh, and uh, uh, and George, uh, I really want to thank you. You, I, I think you made an effort to to present things understandably, and uh, I really appreciate it. It uh, has, has been a very nice uh, series of lectures. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, let's thanks again. Um, I have a question. Oh, <laughs> um, in part three of your theorem, yep. uh, do you expect the, the um, this to be a quasi isomorphism on the small slope part? Uh, part three, part three. So sorry, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you, you mean instead of the strongly small slope part? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, all the time you you see strongly small slope, it should be small slope. In, in in the in, yeah in the idea I mean this this is going to be true and someone's going to prove it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I also want to say I really enjoyed your lectures. Thank, thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Any other question, observation? Oh, okay. Uh, if not, maybe we can. Uh, thanks to both to uh, George and Vincent for this nice series of lecture. Thank you.